Ugh, Sonic. Ugh, this little guy. Oh, he's always giving me conflicting feelings. Never seems to stop with half of his media drops, too. Oh, look at that. There's another one. Sonic X Shadow Generations, an upcoming Sonic release that is definitely making me think a lot about both Sonic Generations and Shadow the Hedgehog. But to give a clear picture on where this bundle of thoughts started, you can just dial it back about a week or so before January 31st. Several days before the PlayStation State of Play, there was a pretty big leak flying around social media where a Sonic Generations remaster was planned to drop this year. You combine the words Sonic and remaster in a sentence, it doesn't usually evoke a confident stride within it. And about two days before PlayStation's SOP, that leak got further clarity in it that it would be called Sonic X Shadow Generations, being a remaster of Generations adding an extra campaign focused on Shadow with new levels and other stuff. You put prominent leaks together for Sonic fans to chew on, it's hard to not see this trend or surf in an off-tweet on Twitter, Reddit, or a YouTube video. But Sonic Generations, that is a Sonic game I love a lot. I fully believe Sonic Generations, alongside Sonic Unleashed, have a lot of the best of what the boost formula has to offer. Colors has its fans, it was a Sonic game some fans and Sonic the franchise needed at the time. It's solid, it's good, but I always vastly prefer Generations comparatively. Colors' story, its ideas, its themes, they're more original, but Generations clears in its level design and control in my opinion. It's faster, the levels are longer, they have more elaborate paths, the controls are more varied. Coupled with a solid remake of classic Sonic's 2D style of gameplay, it was a Sonic game with great gameplay all around. All of this said, I have massive doubts a ton of people were clamoring for a remaster of Generations. Reasons amalgamating across. It's one of the best old 3D Sonic games in general. It always was relatively accessible. I do not want to hear how you need a modern PC with high processing RAM and 800 gigafarts to run the game smooth. You could run Generations on a potato. Any decent PC from the mid to late 2000s onwards gets the job done. You have a graphics card akin to Nvidia's GTX 900 and higher, you're golden. Most PCs that most people have, you will run generations no problem. I promise you. Other than that, the PS3 version, which you can find decently easily in GameStops these days, honestly, I don't think it's that hard. PS3s though, if you're trying to find one of those, that's a different story altogether. And you could play gens on an Xbox One or Xbox Series S and X, thanks to backwards compatibility with 360 games. There's also a 3DS version with different levels, bosses, stages, slightly altered story and whatnot. But as far as the HD versions, you pretty much had an easy time nabbing the game from either PC or Xbox above anything else. Porting the game to modern systems like the Switch and the PS4, PS5, etc. is a different thing altogether, but no one was really pining for generations to get remastered, specifically. Not just because of that, but also, graphically, after more than a decade since it dropped, Generations is still one of the best looking Sonic games, period. For the longest time, in my opinion, it was the best looking Sonic game that wasn't Sonic Unleashed. It had a great realistic style, it was very detailed and vivid, colorful, beautiful. The locations and scenery were incredibly crisp and gorgeous, barely less defined compared to Unleashed. And even then, like what? Sonic Frontiers, it's the only other competition it's got as far as my own standards for Sonic visually. Third best looking game in the franchise, still a pretty damn gorgeous game. It holds up visually mad well. There's not a whole extra leap you can go up to trying to remaster the visuals, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who's even seen Generations can agree. These two reasons weren't the only big reasons to why a lot of people beyond me were hesitant to these news and leaks. But of course, you could have always remastered Sonic Unleashed, most requested 3D Sonic to get a remaster or re-release on modern consoles to run well and get the support diehard fans want, Visually remake, I don't know, Sonic Adventure 1, Sonic Adventure 2, remaster or remake, Sonic and the Secret Rings, Black Knight, Advanced Trilogy. Point is, you have other options on paper. People would immediately jump at to get the remaster more cases than otherwise, especially compared to Generations. That, on top of, unless they were to remake the 3DS stages and put them in a definitive or ultimate version of Generations. It'd be hard to justify re-releasing it beyond increased accessibility on modern hardware, especially during an era where Sonic fans are getting extremely tired of reused locations and levels and designs for the sake of nostalgia, something that was Generations' entire foundation and the foundation for multiple Sonic games after one way or another. But the obvious caveat to all of this, Colors Ultimate. 
Had a hypothetical Sonic Generations remaster be in the works, there was a solid chance it could have been handed off to a different studio, just like with Colors Ultimate. Colors was a hit of a Sonic game. It was pretty much locked to the Wii and DS. It made sense to doll it up and bring it over to modern hardware. Since it was only on hardware, a generation behind the systems you could play Unleashed and Generations on, mainline Sonic games to come before and after Colors. But, despite a more accessible version of Colors being remastered, it's looked on as an embarrassing re-release of Colors, having the bloom effect turned up to 11, to where it's unflattering visually, the lighting in areas not looking right, and a litany of graphical bugs, glitches, people found across every version of the game, including the patched versions, minor and major. I do believe a general, casual playthrough, most players will feel it's a fine romp, most cases with little problems, but the majority of players did come across one or two of those glitches on their runs, whether certain objects or models completely contorting, transforming, disappearing, load times getting insane, crashing, other problems, but even like best case scenario, right? At the end of it, it was a Sonic remaster that hardly justified the $40 price cut with the new stuff added to the game, and it still didn't look the best it could as a remaster. So all of this in mind, yeah, you can't really blame people for being hesitant or lukewarm in some capacity towards a Generations remaster. And lo and behold, those leaks and rumors were true, but I will say up front, those leaks absolutely went against this announcement and reveal. A lot of the discussion and the stress, anxiety, apathy to a Gen's remaster would have been heavily cushioned had this trailer not leaked. I don't know, man. You, you couldn't dodge this kind of thing if you casually coasted on social media without someone else bringing it up to your feed. Not saying it's the other person's fault. Obviously, people don't have to use the internet if you don't want to get spoiled on this kind of thing. Dude, I don't know. Internet leak and hype culture kind of sours and completely kills or can warp a good chunk of the hype and discussion surrounding these games and reveals dropping before their intended announcement. So I do feel the leaks backfired in this game's case, and on paper, I do get why Sega opted to remaster or re-release Generations in any capacity. Sonic Generations was the last major hit, both financially and critically, for 3D Sonic until Frontiers, just like with Colors and how that got remastered, or how Sonic Adventure DX or SA2 Battle exists. Well, those kind of... it's a little bit different for those two. But theoretically, like Colors Ultimate, re-releasing Gens would have been a slam dunk in making those fans happy alongside bringing along new fans to the Sonic game many deem one of his best. At worst, a good one. Or a Sonic game you're not gonna go wrong with. And if you factor the potential in remaking the 3DS exclusive content, or readapting some content in Sonic games post-generations into generations, you might have something more interesting on your hands. Remaking Water Palace, Radical Highway for the console version for both classic and modern, adding and remaking the bosses from the 3DS version like Big Arms, Bio Lizard, Egg Emperor, the special stages, adding a whole extra era, and remake a stage or two from new modern Sonic games like Lost World, Mania, Forces, Debatable for Frontiers, remaking Desert Ruins or Frozen Factory for the boost style, as well as the 2D style for classic Sonic, Studiopolis Zone or Press Garden Zone in 3D, a newly realized Mortar Canyon or Sunset Heights that completely revamps what those stages should have been, there's a lot of potential in cooking some mass hype for a newly souped up version of Generations. And if nothing else, you could potentially rewrite the story Gens has, which is the game's weakest aspect, like, I don't know, reintroduce Chaos Control as an element of the Emerald beyond Shadow's own abilities, because it's basically just Shadow's own move at this point. It was used as time travel in 06, bring it back here, make Time Eater a whole complete robot Eggman build instead of randomly finding it in space post colors, make Sonic and Co scour for the Emerald specifically to undo Eggman's doing, then just having shit return back to normal after dismantling the Time Eater. Even in like little ways, really minute, small ways, you could make Jenda's story even marginally more enjoyable or more engaging than how it is right now. But there are several ways, basically, a Generations re-release can and still both deliver plenty of hype and justification as well as disappointment and wasted potential. So now that leads us to the current day, Sonic X Shadow Generations. A Sonic Generations remaster featuring newly remastered versions of the 2D and 3D stages, I'm going off the YouTube description, with upgraded visuals and new bonus content. Alongside this, a brand new campaign featuring Shadow the Hedgehog and new bosses, stages, 
they will be in the game and this collection will drop later this fall on all current systems. PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S, Steam, Epic, Nintendo Switch. Here's a short reaction of mine to the trailer from yesterday. <laughs> Why'd they use those renders for the thumbnail, bro? Those are like decade old renders. Hey, Shadow. No, oh, that's funny. They made new cinematics for this. It's the boy. Yo! 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 Ooh! Oh! Oh! What? Okay. Wait. Oh my god. Wait a second. Yo! <laughs> Black Doom up in this bitch! Shadow the Hedgehog levels! Okay. Oh, that looks insanely good. Yo, buy a lizard boss fight. Let's go. Why those re caught? Oh, autumn 2024. Okay, so that's a fall game. Okay. Uh. 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 Um. Hmm. <laughs> but let me blue ball you a little bit more. We're gonna still talk about the generations portion a little bit more. And I'm not a huge graphics whore unless it kind of matters. I do appreciate insane visuals when I see them. I am assuming the generations footage in this trailer is the actual remaster. I'm not gonna lie, it looks exactly the same as the other HD versions. All of them. I might I might see some new textures on the white skyscraper in City Escape Act 1, wearing classic Sonic skateboarding in the air. Other than that, I see zero difference in graphics, and I kind of don't care. Again, Gen's always looked very good. It never needed the remaster treatment, and at least it's not running the risk of being a botched remaster like Colors Ultimate and to lesser extent previous Sonic remasters like the Adventure ones. That says more on just the overall quality of past Sonic remasters as remasters on top of mine, other fans, and Sega's expectations and standards for this sort of thing. If I'm celebrating the fact Jens looks the same as it did a decade ago, but I don't care. It's an L all on its own for me saying this. I don't care. Gen still looks good, which is more than what I could say about Colors Ultimate, even comparing it to OG Colors. That's all I care about. It just looks good. On top of that, Sonic teams behind this remaster, not Blind Squirrel, like with Colors Ultimate, or any other separate team. It's in-house with the main team. Thank God. <laughs> even when the Sonic team now is not the same Sonic team that made OG Gens whatsoever, I'd rather entrust Sonic Team with this than a separate studio in more cases than not. But the official site and the YouTube description tease bonus content separate from the Shadow stuff. So now this raises the question, how much new content are we actually getting, right? And it does point back to Colors Ultimate because what, that had like a rival race mode with Metal Sonic like once per world or something like that. A new Wisp didn't really do anything to the main game. New costumes and that was pretty much it. All of which is pretty damn fillery, but that's the thing. This remaster is being done not by Blind Squirrel, and with how Sonic Team is now, especially after Frontiers, I re I don't know how far they're gonna go as far as base generation specifically. Before this announcement, I would have said there's absolutely zero chance we're getting 3DS stages remade, 3DS bosses remade, 3DS special stages, new modern levels from the last three to four Sonic games remade, or any altered story, etc. After Colors Ultimate, after Sonic Origins as well, there's no way they are gonna go that extra mile in making that content. But now, after the trailer, especially the Shadow stuff, I don't know, oh, I don't know. It's hard to say unless they show more. And I feel like fusing plus remaking the 3DS content with the console stuff would make it a definitive version of Generations most people would unironically be hyped for. In my opinion, that's best case scenario. And with or without that, if we get the odds of new added stages from Lost World, Mania, and Forces, maybe Frontiers in some way, I doubt for Frontiers, that would still be a plus. But it's all just speculation. Now, I can at least say with confidence, there's a non-zero chance we could get either or, which is something Better than me saying, no way. I don't think it's a zero, it's at least more than zero. Take that for what you will. Not only that, what if we got tweaked controls? Jen's controls good as a boost game, 
Modern Sonic still feels a little stiff though. What if you made him looser to complement the more open design of the stages? You also look in the shadow portion. He does look like he controls a little differently in some boss fights. I'll get to that later. You made Classic and Superstars feel a lot closer to his original trilogy and Mania counterparts than either Gens or Forces did. So what are the odds they go back and tweak Classic's physics and controls to mimic 2, 3, Mania, or Superstars better? Added music to the song gallery. Again, there's plenty of ways you can make the base side of Generation hype in this remaster. We have no clue how far they're gonna go, and this is being developed by Sonic Team. The odds are a lot grayer than with other studios. I really hope we get some of any of what I described in a solid capacity. Not even everything, but like one new stage per era, or a new modern modern era or whatever. I'd be down. And like, yeah, to be fair, this is another nostalgia glazing Sonic title Sega's pumping out again. Even if it's a remaster, even when that was Jens' appeal from the get-go, and it was the one game most excused it for being before it became the norm for a decade plus. It's what Jens always was, so I'm not th I'm not that anal when it comes to that for Jens, the nostalgia aspect of it all. That's its point. It's just the fact it's literally Jens again, one of the safest and uninspired Sonic games this past decade plus. So even when it's a remaster, I can imagine this is going to be a hard sell for some people because of that. I don't blame you if you're not enticed on this because it's doing the same thing OG Gens did. Lost World, Mania, Forces, Frontiers, even Sonic Prime, and a couple other Sonic Media did this past generation, Hardy Horror. One definite downside we can all agree absolutely sucks. Sega's totally gonna pull this game, the original generations, from PC and other digital stores. That's gonna be ass. That's gonna be total ass. It's an original version of the game, it's old, it should be accessible to people if they want, and with gens, with generations specifically, it's gonna sting a lot harder because the modding scene for this game goes that crazy. There are games that are great, but they have incredibly talented modding communities that make those great games significantly better. Mario Kart Wii, Call of Duty Zombies across every COD game that has a Zombies mode, the Black Ops series mainly, and of course, Sonic Generations. You delist gens from Steam, you're making the OG moddable version impossible to get and mod, spinning all over the decade plus long dedication the scenes made to adding so many custom levels, packs, control tweaks, mode swaps, etc. Especially the level packs and custom level mods. There are literally thousands of those in Generations, and it got even more popular and beloved because of them. If this remaster gets hit with Denuvo or whatever software that makes modding their games infinitely harder, even worse. It's artificial scarcity, it's spitting all over the projects and creations thousands of Sonic fans made towards the game for free, out of love for it. It feels like a very un-Sega thing to do when most cases they celebrate, champion, or just let Sonic fans mod or make fan games. Unlike how Nintendo goes about that sort of thing, especially with modded content, and it's gonna suck when it happens because Generations has a popular modding scene. I expect it to happen, damn near everyone else is too. They pulled Sonic 1, 2, CD, and 3 from both Steam and digital storefronts on the other systems. When Origins dropped, I'm fully expecting them to do it here. If they make this remaster open and easy for modding, awesome. I really hope they do if they do pull gens from PC. If not, just don't pull it from the store. The last thing I would want to do is pull the rug out from the massive Sonic Generations modding community. On the positive side though, I am glad we're getting Generations on Switch in some form. To me, that's hype. I've always wanted Generations on Switch, so it's a plus. Also, if Gens looks the same as its original versions, the Switch could deadass probably handle base Gens extremely well, unlike every other Sonic game on Switch besides Mania. I don't expect that at all, unfortunately. It can though, it can. It has the potential. I don't expect it. And of course, why those renders in the thumbnail? Why the late 2000s ass thumbnails with Sonic and Shadow? Shit looks fan made and ripped out of a fan theory. It's funny, it's kind of cringe, but it's funny because of it. Why the name? Sonic X Shadow Generations. Do you not know the fan base you're catering this game to that has copious Sonato shipping fan art? You couldn't think of a better name? Sonic Plus Shadow, Sonic and Shadow. It's a beaten to death joke in the span of a day, but I do feel for the parents who are trying to look this game up for the holidays to buy for their kid, and they just see all that crazy fan art for Sonic and Shadow. The logo does go hard. Some people are mixed on the logo, I really like the logo. And after all of this, what could they possibly do to justify a Sonic Generations remaster? Why re-release a Sonic game focused on Sonic's history that they dropped over a decade ago? 
How do we get people on board? Shadow. <laughs> How do we make this worthwhile? You put Shadow the Hedgehog in the game. Is it cheap, low-hanging fruit in a sense? Probably. Yes. Do I care? No. I love Shadow, are you kidding me? All this talk of, man, they could screw the pooch for this generation's remaster in so many ways. And all it takes for me to say, okay, you got me, now I'm curious, now I'm hype, is goddamn 2000's fan service. It's goddamn Shadow fan service. All it takes is Shadow. To be fair, in my defense for why this is worth hyping up, at least on this end, the Shadow stuff, I got three reasons. A. This one matters a lot less. This is why leaks worked against this announcement. The portion of this trailer would have made the Shadow surprise genuinely a lot more surprising by a lot more people than those who saw or heard the leaks or heard offhand. B. They may go light on base gens and how much new stuff is in regular gens, Sonic Generations. They definitely do not seem to be doing that for Shadow's campaign whatsoever. I'm gonna call it Shadow Generations. Yes, you could spot reused animations for homing attacking and some background visuals in the city portion of that level, both from Frontiers. They did reuse assets and whatnot, but oh my God, there is a strong chance this Shadow campaign might be as long more or less as regular Generations, which is insanely hype. Entirely new levels, at the very least remade levels from Shadow the Hedgehog, new boss fights with Bio Lizard, Black Doom is the main villain of a campaign. Shadow's own game from 2005 is a central focus to this campaign. Full recognition to Shadow the Hedgehog after 19 years when it was one of the two primary Black Sheep Sonic games Sega wanted nothing to do with. Now Ian Flynn's writing the story behind the campaign as well. This is massive content that would not feel slouched on or they would just be like, eh, just like shove this like, no. This would take a lot of effort, and see, it really feels like Sega and Sonic teams trying to make Shadow a consistent core character again. Like, Sonic Prime, he's the only main Sonic character besides Sonic, who survives the Shadowverse corruption and is a key player in Seasons 2 and 3. Sonic Movie 3 is coming out towards the end of this year. It's gonna adapt SA2 with Shadow as the main focus. This remaster, Sonic X Shadow Generations, re-releasing gens, but also giving Shadow an entire campaign. Like. This isn't just the most relevant Shadow has ever been, literally ever, not just since the mid-2000s. And not only does this and Prime feel like more than just generating some synergy and marketing with the Sonic 3 movie, but it really does feel like Sega's trying to reintroduce Shadow in a new era for people to be familiar with, expanding his popularity, defining his character straight and firm after all this time, and treating Shadow with a lot more respect and confidence than they did post-Adventure 2, or really post-Shadow the Hedgehog or 06. It feels very refreshing seeing Shadow get this much limelight and focus after all this time. 2024 pretty much is the year of Shadow. And as a Sonic fan whose favorite character is Shadow, I am all here for it. It's a great time if you're a Shadow fan. And I swear this reveal would have me going crazier if I didn't know the leaks beforehand. I'm so glad others are mentioning this. That reveal low-key felt like a Smash Newcomer trailer. The fact it looked exactly like Sonic Generations' gameplay and its opening cutscene, to Shadow popping out of nowhere, Sonic shocked, both doing the SA2 pose, classic Sonic confused and flabbergasted, to the close-up of Shadow on the green hill, to what pretty much could have been a splash text pop-up then and there for him and Smash, it had the exact same energy and setup a Smash trailer would. It's so funny comparing the two, because it pretty much is like almost the same type of trailer. I'm a little pissed this is the closest we'll ever get to Shadow getting a Smash trailer, being put in Smash, unless they announce Smash Ultimate's getting a deluxe port, but it is funny to see. And classic Sonic being thrown off, it's hilarious. You could tell they knew Sonic Team or Sega, they knew what they were doing, putting classic Sonic out of focus in the corner when Shadow shows up. But it's also funny when you retroactively look at how people treat classic Sonic now. Just this spare little Sonic, a lot of people are sick of seeing, in the 3D games especially, thrown to the wayside, as when most fans cheered at both a Sonic with modern gameplay and a Sonic with 2D gameplay, now it's a Sonic with modern gameplay and a Sonic look-alike with modern gameplay and a different personality and a different story from 2001. The pose, the campaign's contents, now the marketing for Sonic Generations being Sonic and Shadow and not classic and modern Sonic. It's ironic yet symbolic 
how they're making classic feel more and more out of place since Forces. Plus, the idea behind shoving Shadow in Sonic Generations. This marketing shift, the logo, the name, the new structure, like, it feels like a fan concept or a fan theory by a Shadow fanboy. And here we are, an official true remaster coming next fall. And the way this remaster setup is giving me and others Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury vibes to where that had two minor changes to the main campaign and the only major thing was another new campaign. This game's pretty much doing the same thing, but like I, I never played the original Shadow the Hedgehog. But even I know the stages they showed here were meant to be from that game and not SA2. But also, the fact that this is being a major component of this re-release and seeing at least two levels plus a pretty dynamic boss fight with Biolizard and Black Doom as the main villain, Ian Flynn writing the story too, there's, there's no way this is three levels. There's no way this is gonna be some short episode shadow Sonic Forces bullshit to where it'll be three levels you could clear in 10 minutes and that's it. I do not think this campaign's gonna be that shallow or short. Which that's wild to me to even consider that's a genuine viable possibility. On top of the fact, again, they're acknowledging Shadow the Hedgehog, the game, in 2024. With Black Doom and everything. That was not on my bingo card for this decade at all, not even 2024. That low-key might be emblematic for Black Doom and the Black Arms odds of appearance in Sonic Movie 3. And I really want to know where the story is going to go in this campaign. And for how much I do wish they alter or add or change to Sonic Generations story, at least Shadow Generations' story may actually have a coherent and genuine plot with some substance to it. And the fact it's a serious and slightly heavier plot. I may not have played Shadow's game, but I love Sonic Adventure 2 for plenty of reasons, one of which being its more serious story. Black Knight's beloved for how serious and well-written its story is. Say whatever you will about 06 and how cringe it may get, but Silver and primarily Shadow's story is the highlight of that game, especially the bits where it gets more serious. Shadow's story being the primary highlight of 06 for most people too. Unleashed plays it straighter than these, but it does have weight and substance with Chip, his purpose, and his friendship with Sonic throughout the game. At least Shadow's campaign here is giving us another semi-serious story again, and is continuing to play into what I think a lot of people, especially critics, undersold the shit out of and what makes Sonic so good beyond the gameplay. And I have confidence given Flynn's behind it and the characterization, at least for the localized version, which Frontier still did mad well at least. If nothing else, Shadow Generations looks very promising. I'm seeing some people say the level design looks Forces-esque, I mostly disagree, I think the level design looks very good so far, the Space Colony arc level had some extra paths to traverse, the overall levels looked vast and expand- like long, I don't want to say expansive because it, it looks like it goes really far, basically it's 3D, the cinematics look cool too, I'm optimistic as far as level design goes, and I'm sure there's a lot more they're not showing on purpose. Also, am I overstepping when I say this shadow gameplay? Is deadass the best this franchise has ever looked? I don't think I'm cre- Like, dude, the Space Colony arc. Oh my god, that looks incredibly insane. Bio Lizard has a whole new model and everything. He looks insanely detailed. He looks incredible. The whole chamber for Bio Lizard during that boss fight looks spectacular. I have to imagine they're making- this campaign under a new engine, at least different from Hedgehog Engine 1, which is what Generations was made under. It might be Hedgehog Engine 2. I'm floored at the visuals for Shadow Generations though. Oh my god, it looks so, so good. Maybe this level of fidelity could seep its way into Sonic Generations. Maybe eventually, I don't know, it's different Engine 2, I'm pretty sure. There might be a chance they could make Sonic Generations base game look like that. That would warrant the remaster, it would warrant a Generations remaster if base gens can look that insanely polished, because this campaign does look insanely polished. I would take back all of my comments on gens not needing a remaster if it somehow wounds up looking like Shadow Generations. Plus, if that Bio Lizard fight is anything to go off of, the controls might be promising too. All of this in mind, like this is also why I'm very curious for how much they might change in base Sonic Generations. Because if Shadow's controls might be different 
and looser and fluid because he does kind of look like that. It's really slight, but I'm getting the sense that's how it's going to be in the Bio Lizard fight. There's got to be a shot in Modern Sonic. We'll get that too. I mean, we've seen plenty of mods where they, they change the physics and controls for both Classic and Modern. So it is possible. And if they're trying to go this hard with Shadow's campaign, who's to say they'd only stick to going hard for Shadow stuff when they could for Sonic? There might be some hope for the Sonic stuff. And if it's a whole campaign around Sonic Gens' length, we might see even more stages and stuff across Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Heroes, more Shadow the Hedgehog levels, obviously. Maybe even Sonic 06. I think we might actually see Mephilus as one of the bosses in this campaign. Maybe we get a boss fight where we fight against Sonic as Shadow, reenacting the SA2 final hero in Dark Story fights. That'd be pretty sick. Maybe as far as levels go, Sky Rail, Radical Highway, and Final Chase if that arc level wasn't won from Shadow's own game. Maybe Hang Castle, Mystic Mansion, Dusty Desert, White Acropolis, Aquatic Base. The fact even half of any of this is marginally realistic, doesn't have to be halfway, even just like marginally, 30, 25%, is baffling to me. Because I don't think anything's stopping them from putting any 06 content or other games Shadow is in if they're going hog wild for doing anything Shadow the Hedgehog did. The Shadow game. I mean, hell, this might be reaching, but like, would anything from Sonic Battle or Sonic Rivals be reaching like they could rip from there? It probably is. It might be reaching. Any of the main games, though, from the early to mid-2000s where Shadow was a prominent character, I think that's fair game. And they're giving Shadow abilities and mechanics specific to him, the homing attack warp, he uses Chaos Spear when he fights by a lizard. It's insane. They're doing a lot for the Shadow campaign already. It looks incredibly good so far. There might even be more surprises and fun stuff in the wake. And saying all this about a new Shadow game, pretty much, in 2024, it's like a fever dream. The same year I'm getting a Thousand Year Door remake alongside the Sonic 3 movie. You sure I'm not dreaming right now? I, I, I was up all night making this, but I might, I might be dreaming. I might be going crazy though, because I haven't slept yet. One last thing I do think this remaster would benefit a lot from. Multiplayer. I fully expect when you beat Shadow Generations, you get to play as Shadow in the Sonic Generation stages. A lot like beating Episode Shadow and Forces, it grants you that in that game. But this remaster has the easiest opportunity to allow multiplayer and two people can 1v1 race in any of these stages. A lot like the races in SA2 Battle. It's right there. It's right there. It'd be so easy. And a lot of people would unironically love that addition. C Sonic Team. Second. Come on. Come on. Multiplayer races would be so hype. You have no idea. No, I want, I would love multiplayer races in this game. It's right there. You're playing as two Sonics, please. Oh my God. You didn't do it in Forces. That's fine, because Forces was ass. You gotta do it in this game. Please, please. But other than that, a lot of it does seem to boil down to how much new stuff Sonic Generations will have and what else does Shadow Generations have in store. Because we have reason to believe there's a lot more that they have that they're holding out on. I'm really curious there, but Shadow Generations looks really good so far. I'm really excited for the remaster just from that alone. Sonic Generations looks the same, which is both a bummer and a sigh of relief, but I do hope it gets more content and it doesn't just skim out on being a basic port. I do wish it could look like Shadow Generations does, because that straight up is the best the Sonic series has looked ever. I'm dead serious. But Gen still looks good, art style and all. I hope we get more stages, whether another modern era with Lost World, Mania, Forces, and or Frontier stages. 50-50 there. Or 3DS content remade for this remaster, less than 25% confident there. Gens didn't need a remaster, but adding any of this content or updating the visuals to match Shadow Generations would give it significantly stronger justification. I genuinely hope Shadow Generations gives us several more stages and a couple more boss fights for us to lose our shit over and a solid story. I'm like 90-95% confident there. But yeah, don't rip the original game from Steam, do not slap your modding scene like that Sega, pretty please. Classic Sonic feels more out of place now than ever. For all the mixed emotions I have with this remaster, before and after the reveal, there's a lot more I'm optimistic on. I love Gen Z either way, so I'm definitely looking forward to this remaster. Shadow Generations, though. Love Shadow. You're the Shadow, baby. You're Shadow the Hedgehog. I'm looking forward to finishing my Invincible Season 1 review, as the end is in sight for me editing. Thank you for watching, and stay super.